Well, our Christian school began this week, and I'm so happy to announce that we've had a great week. Because of the COVID restrictions and all the various extra things we have to do to make school work this year, I'm not going to be able, at least for a few weeks, to have a devotion time with the staff. Normally, each year, I take a day or two in the morning prior to school beginning and share just a few devotional thoughts. But I'm thankful that I can share those devotional thoughts with you, as I have been each Wednesday for several weeks now. I've been thinking about politics, and I don't want to talk much about politics, but the political conventions usually cause the insults, mudslinging, and even lies to become more pronounced and worse than normal in a political season. It's hard to believe that we could hear such things out of the mouths of people who are in a civilized society. It occurs to me that civilized society should actually be civil. Social media has become a familiar place to vent the frustrations of those that aren't necessarily politicians but have very strong political views. People can type in something that's pretty mean when they wouldn't say it to someone's face. How sad that is that we have let our communication deteriorate that way. As Christians, we should be very, very careful. Since we bear the name of Christ, we are Christ ones or Christians, our behavior and our speech should speak well of Christ. I read again this week the final verses of Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, we read these words. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. This is a reminder about two things. First of all, it's a reminder about the restrictions of our speech. No corrupt communication is to proceed from our mouths. Corrupt means rotten. Corrupt means worthless. Corrupt means corrupt. It's easy to criticize. Uh, let me illustrate that. This week, I went into, uh, I should drive, I drive through a um, restaurant and bought a lunch. And when I got to the counter and they were giving me my change, they said, well, we don't have any coins. No, no, no. They said, we don't have any pennies. I said, well, what is the change amount supposed to be? They said, 22 cents. Well, I said, if you don't have pennies, do you have dimes? Well, the girl looked at me and said, I guess we don't have those either. And I drove off 22 cents the poorer. That 22 cents is not going to make me or break me, and I'm not going to tell you which fast food drive through restaurant that was. But I hadn't been there for a while, and with the attitude that seemed like they didn't care, I probably won't be there again for a while. Now, it's easy to criticize, but we need to be careful as Christians that we aren't criticized. In fact, I had some smart aleck remarks I wanted to tell that lady or that young girl at that drive through window. Two or three things came to my mind that I thought would be pretty appropriate. But then I realized I'm a Christian. And I realize I'm a pastor. And I realize that lady may know me. Or she may show up in church Sunday as a first time guest. I'd better be careful what I say. And the scripture is giving me instructions. I have some restrictions on my speech. No corrupt communication should come from my mouth. This is especially true in politics where the remarks sometimes are not even true. The remarks are just opinions, and where in many, ta many times, in many cases, you're dealing with someone who has a closed mind, and just to insult them does nothing, nothing good. Christians have restrictions on our speech. No corrupt communication is to come from our mouths. But he gives us, as we continue in verse 29 of Ephesians 4, the reasons for our speech. 
He says, but it should be that which is good for the use of edifying. People need to be encouraged. Imagine growing up in a home or a situation where you were the constant butt of, if, of criticism. You were always being criticized. You never could do anything right in the eyes of your parents. Contrast that with growing up in a home where you were not criticized. In fact, you were praised when you did things right. You were encouraged to do things right. Constant criticism can ruin a person. How about a workplace where it's the same way? Someone is either criticizing you for what you're doing wrong or encouraging you and teaching you how to do that which is right. As Christians, we need to be that kind of people. The reason for our speech is to say that which is good to the use of edifying or building up or strengthening or helping other people. In which area will we thrive? We won't thrive in a critical area. We'll, cry, we'll thrive in that which is encouraging and uplifting. Now take this into all of our lives, into our family life, into our life with our friends, into the workplace, even into our church. How then should we speak? I remember as a child learning this, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. I think perhaps that's what the Apostle Paul is telling us when he says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Let's today make an effort to edify, to build up, to strengthen someone with our speech. God bless you. Have a great day.